so good. It's still good. I don't care if I'm not taping or not. It's so good. Are we still taping? Cut. Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the Good Old Boy. That's me, where we're cooking up dishes straight from RecipesThatCrock.com, which is my beautiful wife's cooking blog that has well over 600 recipes and rising. And today, we're going to be making some sandwiches. <laughs> we're going to be making an Italian sandwich. If you want to call it an Italian loose meat sandwich, um, an Italian sloppy joe, Italian... It's got some Italian stuff in it. And you make it into a sandwich and you say, mmm, that tastes like an Italian sandwich. And that's what we're going to make today. <laughs> and what you'll need are the following ingredients. It goes a little something like this. You need one pound of lean ground beef. I believe this is extra lean ground beef. Yeah. And one pound, one package of sausage. This is a mild sausage. If you like it a little extra spicy, you might do a spicy sausage. But hold on to that thought before you go buy a hot sausage. You also need um, one onion one red pepper, one green pepper. You want one half of a bottle of an Italian dressing. Like so a, it's a cup. Eight ounces, eight it's ounces, one cup. cup. So this is one bottle, which is 16 ounces. I used half of it for a quickie video, which is also what we're finished with here. So I'm gonna use the other half. And then also what we put in it are some red pepper flakes, just a little bit. In fact, you just want a half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And I think that's too much. It's plenty, it's spicy, it's hot. I like it, but I also kind of have started digging some like hotter things. See, so I mean, have you met my wife? And, uh, <laughs> but if optional. you, yeah, leave this optional at the end if somebody wants to sprinkle the red pepper flakes on. If you've got people in your family who really aren't um, hip to hot things, spicy things, then you might want to leave this out. If you dig it, we'll go crazy because this will definitely spice it up. But we're getting this recipe out of Gooseberry Patch's slow cooker to the rescue. And this is a recipe that we're adapting from Christy from Freedens, Pennsylvania. And all you want to do is the following. Take your, ooh, that's hot too, be careful. Take your beef and put it in there along with your sausage and you want to brown it up. Drop that down in there. Get all that sausage out of the packaging. Get out of there. There you go. <coughs> Take my handy dandy mix and chop. The good one must be in the dishwasher. It is. Are those the dishes I did today or are those the dishes you no, those are the dishes you did today. We have, I, we have to keep I like I need to get you a great big sticker that says I did the dishes today. Don't do that. I got up before my wife today <laughs> and I did a big old load of dishes. All by myself! And he's been talking about it all day long. <laughs> I was proud. The oh, dog's gonna like that one. Yeah, pretty. you're yeah. flinging things everywhere. That's why I do not like, like the, the official mix and chop. Yeah, because that stuff sticks in there. If it's if it's something that's got a lot of fat in it, like sausage tends to do, it'll do that. Set this here, and then while that is continuing to brown up, I will chop up my onion and my peppers but I came home the other night and Chris was trying out a bunch of different recipes from this book and this was one of them that she tried out she goes hey come here and try this and she made me a sandwich of it and what was my reaction to that you were like oh it's one of my top five now yeah something and I don't know what recipe it was got booted out of the top five I don't, think, I don't think you uh, fully, I don't think you fully let recipes know that what rank, what current ranking they have. I, I do that with a few things like movies and stuff like that. Somebody will say, what about this? And you'll say, oh, that's in my top five. <laughs> What's in your top five movies? Mine is Forrest Gump. Um, 
Let's see, what's another really good movie? Wizard of Oz. That's in the top five. Oh, you can't talk about Wizard of Oz if you're not going to give us your impression of the Cowardly Lion. <laughs> but now I need to hear it. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Put them up. Put them up. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? Yes. I, you, actually, I was waiting now? for you to break into song. No, I'm not going to break into oh, song. Oh, you break If the I <laughs> were king of the forest, <laughs> not queen, not duke, and not prince. <laughs> All right, that's enough. <laughs> A former cowardly lion uh, right yeah. before me. Yeah, that's right. My senior year in high school, I played the cowardly lion. That was a lot of fun. Kind of like making this sandwich. <laughs> There's my onion. Let me get my... And something really cool that I learned from a sweet lady. Her name's Rachel. You might know her as Rachel Ray. Oh. <laughs> is to have a bowl on standby. And I'm just using the bowl that had the meat in it. So that I don't have to keep running back and forth to the trash can. Just put all my stuff in one bowl. So Rachel, if you're watching, well, call me. <laughs> and two, thanks for the tip, because that is genius. Simple, simple trick. Just to get all your stuff you're getting rid of in one bowl. What's a handy trick that y'all do in the kitchen? What's something that maybe you picked up on your own or you learned from your mama. Oh, I know, I know. Tell me, tell me. I have my husband do a load of dishes in the dishwasher. You <laughs> are hilarious today. <laughs> I thought I'd get more points than I did for all that, but... All right, so let me slice this in half. Get rid of your there no, this knife isn't sharp enough to do that. We need to get our knife sharpened. Or I need to get a knife sharpener anyway. Kind of. Do y'all do that? Do y'all do have somebody sharpen your knives or maybe have a whetstone or something at home? That, do many people have whetstones at home? I grew up in a house full of knives and knife sharpeners. My, my dad hunted, all my brothers hunted, I hunted. And so there's always knives somewhere, usually hunting knives. And I think that was the manly thing to do around my house is somebody was always sharpening a knife just to see who could sharpen it better. Well, why don't you go talk to one of them sharpeners and... I should. I should talk. I should call my brother Doug. Go for a visit. Because that guy, I've never seen anybody be able to sharpen a knife as sharp as he could. I mean, he could get it to where you could lay a piece of paper on the blade and it'd, and it'd slice right through it. He was a brilliant knife sharpener. Not as good looking as me, but, oh my you know. Goodness. No, actually, they say that we are, we're twins separated by 13 years. <laughs> but now, we'll just chop up. And again, it's, I would say you want to do this depending on how you like your consistency of peppers and onions. I just did a rough chop on my onions. I'm going to do the same thing with my peppers. Yeah, I would say, you know, this recipe reminds me a lot of, like, a Philly steak. Yeah. But made with ground meat instead mm -hmm. of instead steak. Of, yep. Instead of sliced meat. That's definitely, because you serve it up on um, uh, sub rolls with uh, provolone cheese. Yes, so. that's very good. And one thing I like to put on it, and I put on it the other night, to sweeten it up a little bit more. What? was some barbecue sauce. I just um, put just a real thin strip of sweet baby rays on there. Yeah. And it really, really was. You good. know what I bought to eat with it? Hmm. I bought some Havarti slices mm. instead of provolone. Yeah. So I'm thinking, you tried it yet? I'm gonna try it. I also I'll think you'd have already tried it. Ah uh, um, I'm also thinking that this recipe probably freezes pretty well. Yeah. 
So since we're going to have, what, four pounds of it? <laughs> and I bet there is other stuff you could do with it, too. Oh, yeah. Because this recipe looks a lot like our make-ahead ground beef recipe. Yeah. Which is just beef and onions. Right. But this is beef and onions and peppers and sausage, so it's like an Italian make-ahead. Yeah, you, you could, could totally do other things with this. This would probably go good in an Italian soup. In a soup, you could, hmm, you could use it. Spaghetti sauce? Yeah. But today, we're just going to But not if you're going to put all those red pepper flakes in it. Man, that no. makes that hot. No, that's going to be, unless you like your spaghetti spicy. Some people like spicy spaghetti. Me, I'm good either way. But I definitely love these red peppers because they're really sweet. And get my garbage bowl out of the way. My meat is just about done. Just pretty much want to get all that red out. And if you don't get all the red out, it's not going to hurt anything because this is going to cook for a few more hours once you put everything together. But get it cooked up a little bit. Now, to clarify, if you have a regular slow cooker and not a browning slow cooker, this step is done in your skillet, yep. not in your you know what I just noticed here this says in that recipe to drain it and we must be using it must be because we're using a leaner beef yeah there isn't a lot of fat in there but you still need to take it out to layer you still want to take it out because one of the next steps is to layer the beef so I am gonna shut that off Yeah, there's hardly any, whatever moisture's in there is evaporating now. There's not a lot of fat in there now at all. So I'm not going to worry about the draining part. If you really, really, really need this leaner, you might go ahead and drain well, it out. If you if you used a higher fat beef, you're definitely yeah. going to need to drain. But I need to grab, let's see if I got a bowl down here. I got one more bowl. This will work. And if you move my spoons around, here we go. This will work. I'm going to take this out of the slow cooker and I'll show you why. You know what I didn't put in there? What didn't you put in there? The red pepper flakes. Yay! Because I'm going to be nice to you. Thank you. Because you're going to want to eat this tomorrow and I know you probably won't enjoy it or eat it at all. If I put those red flapper, red flapper pakes in. <laughs> don't put red flapper pakes in anything. And then if you like to say, if you don't like things spicy, leave the red pepper flakes out of here. That little bit of beef right there. And that should be good enough. It's going to get mixed back up at the end anyway. So now what I want to do, instead of dirtying another bowl, I'm just going to do it like this. Just going to mix it up here on my, my counter and I want to take I'm going to do my math here so it's two it's a three third. so it's a third so I want to do a third. I want to do one third of these peppers so I'll do it right here peppers and onions and put them in the bottom how do you switch that to slow cooker I've turned it off. Okay. So you get your peppers and onions in the bottom of your slow cooker. Don't use your fingers to get it spread out in there because I just learned from experience it will burn. And then I want to take half of my beef mixture, beef and sausage mixture, and that bowl is hot. And all you're doing is just making sure that it's even. Could you mix it all up together in there? Sure. Yeah. But we're going to do it like the recipe says. A little bit more. There's half. And I will go back and do the other third. Right over the top. Doesn't have to be 100% accurate. That's good. And then the rest of my beef she didn't see that. That's good. What did you do? Um, oh um, my goodness! Cooker. So, Oopsie. this counter is clean. 
And that dog is happy for what did not make it onto the counter, but onto the floor. Here you go, Aki. My goodness. And then the rest of your peppers. And for goodness sake, make sure it goes in this little cooker. <laughs> Just like that. Right over the top. And then, ooh, somebody's going to get a big piece of onion in their sandwich. And then, excuse me, happy dog. Come on, the dog tap dancing. <laughs> Take my other half of my bottle, my half a bottle Woo! of, what, it make you nervous or something? Well, I thought it was going to like come squirting out, right. not pouring out. I didn't realize. Over the top of your mixture. And then, according to Gooseberry Patch, or more specifically, according to Christy, you want to set this on low for six hours, which I will do after I'm done showing y'all what it looks like when you get done. Set it on low for six hours, and then when it comes out, stir it up. You need to clean up your station. Yeah, I kind of made a mess. But you know me, I'll get up early in the morning and clean it all Oh, off. okay. We heard it on tape. Yeah, well, they didn't hear this for a couple days. So. Oh, I was going to say, you're going to edit that part out, right? Yeah. <laughs> ah, the power of editing. <laughs> I had an onion in it, so I definitely don't want to feed that to my dog. He would not like that. Ooh. Nor would you. <laughs> and my final product is right here. And when you get done, it looks wobbly. There we go. It looks just like that. Just stir it up. Look at that. And I can see all the peppers have cooked down. The onions have cooked down. All that flavor has married up together along with the salad dressing. And this does have the red pepper flakes in it, which I'm more than fine with. Maybe we could do a compromise and like just mix both batches together. So <laughs> I would use a slotted spoon to pull that out onto your bread or your bread's going to get soggy. I'm going to use a slotted spoon. You know why? Why? She said so. And notice I'm using a rubber spoon because this is a nonstick surface. Don't use metal on nonstick. And I'm also going to mush my bread down a little bit. Make a little bit of a divot, a trough, if you will, a feeding trough <laughs> to put this in. And right over. The now, the funny thing about this is he takes it. He, he, this is one recipe he's actually been okay eating the leftovers of. Yes. I'm, a, like or I said, in as like good as it gets. Fending everyone off and not letting anyone else have yep. the leftovers. I'm and a leftover like, snob. And he's like, this has to go on cooking Chris's dishes. You get all the little bits on the side yes. before I really take Provolone cheese on the top. You're going to try it with Havarti. Yes. I'm more of a traditional guy. Are you? I'm a traditional Italian. Uh, I don't think so. You got I my think... Provolone cheese slice on there. I just took one slice, broke it in half, laid it along there. And now we try it. I think you're full. American boy. Well, I got a little Italian in me now. Mmm. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> Do you like it, Pud? Mm. <laughs> One of my favorite things ever when we started doing this was discovering new recipes that we love. And this is one of them. That's the fun part about this little job we do. Is there once in a while we'll find a recipe that's like a new family favorite. All the recipes we put on the side are good, but there's some that are just like, oh, that's something we're going to keep making over and over again. This is definitely one of them. Those peppers are good. The, you can taste the green bell, and you can taste the sweetness of that red pepper. And of course the onions just marry up so well with that. It gives a really good sweet oniony flavor. The sausage, the spices from all the um, the spices from the sausage marry up really good with that beef, make it really meaty. 
and then of course you put some provolone cheese on top of it. One thing you might do, and I did this the other night, was I went ahead and put my provolone cheese over my bread mm -hmm. and then slid it in the broiler for just about 20, Ooh. 30 seconds. Kind of toasted up the bread, melted down the cheese, added a little bit of a crunch well, to it. Well, and even putting the cheese on the bottom mm. will protect your bun a little bit so yes. that it doesn't get soggy. Ladies and gentlemen, protect your buns. <laughs> but yep, um, just like she said, put the provolone cheese on the bottom. And then as it sits, all those juices will sit on top of the cheese instead of soaking down into your buns. So I guess what I should or do Or you could do what I do. I just eat it. I eat it with a fork. Yeah. Or what you could do what I do is just eat it really fast. Because <laughs> it's really good and it's not going to take long for those juices to soak in your bun. Because you're just going to soak into you. Mm -mm -mm. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Grot posse. Make that recipe. I'm telling you right now, you will not be disappointed. If you end up not liking that recipe, send your leftovers to P.O. Box 350, <laughs> Monrovia, Indiana, 46157. No. <laughs> Care of the good old boy. Who's over here cooking up another dish from Cooking Chris's Dishes. If you like what you saw, and you want to be a member of this crock posse we keep talking about, click subscribe down below. And join us. That's all you got to do. And you will be a proud member of the Crock Posse, where we're putting up recipes every day, holding discussions about recipes, what we like, what we don't like, the things in life that we love, like a good Italian meat sandwich. <laughs> also, check us out over at Facebook at Recipes That Crock, on Instagram at Recipes That Crock, and on Twitter at Recipes Crock. And y'all keep watching, and we'll keep cooking, and I will keep eating my sandwich. And all will be well. Thanks, y'all. Bye.